Our priority at UC San Diego Health is to make sure that the care that we provide is in line with who you are as a person and that it honors your hopes and values and wishes. So the purpose of advanced care planning is so that if it ever comes to a point where you say get into the hospital for whatever reason and you're unable to make decisions for yourself, it helps your family and loved ones have a little bit more um, details and insight of what you would have wanted if you were able to make decisions for yourself. So it really arms your family with tools that they need to act on your behalf. In the ICU, you really get a sense of how important they are and how it's important to do it when you're healthy because the patients that I see a lot of times, they're not able to talk to me and to tell me what is important to them. But it can really be a positive experience where you just open up conversation with your family to let them know, this is what's really important to me, this is what I value. I've lost quite a lot of people that mean a lot to me and as hurtful as it is when I reflect back, the best part about it was they were never alone. Um, they didn't die tragically and basically Everybody did have an advanced directive, so they had a say in how they want it to go. Filling out an advanced directive is also not difficult. There's basically two portions of the advanced directive. The first portion is just identifying who you'd want to make decisions. The second portion can be a little bit more difficult because it's a little bit more specific to medical interventions that you would want. But if you only feel comfortable filling out parts, the first part of the advanced directive, that's okay too. So it's pretty easy to fill out. Once it's filled out, it requires either a notary or witnesses to make it a legal document. It was really easy to, to make one with, with my husband, and now I know what he wants, and he knows what my wishes are as well. So. If you do have an advanced directive, it can be a very beautiful thing because we need direction and your family needs direction towards the end of life when it's a very stressful time for everybody and everybody's different from one person to the next has completely different wishes and hopes and desires. And so our role as healthcare providers is to do our best to identify where that patient lies on the spectrum. So that's how the advanced directive can really help is having a surrogate decision maker have that insight about you and kind of where you live on that spectrum so that we as the healthcare providers are giving you care that's in line with really what you desire and what you hope for, what you value. I've seen advanced directives honored and it can be a beautiful thing where everybody knows what to do and families together playing music and laughing and sharing memories during the last moments of someone's life and I've also seen the polar opposite of that in the ICU where there's not advanced directive in place and there's this huge burden and stress on the family to try to guess what their loved one would want. So once your advanced directive is complete and you've had it witnessed or notarized, then it's just important that you share it with the system where you receive your care. So you can just bring a copy, save a copy at home, bring a copy to give to your primary care provider. I also recommend that you give a copy to the person who you've identified as your surrogate decision maker so that if ever you end up in a different place than you receive your care, that they have a copy and they can bring it to the hospital and let them know I'm this person's surrogate and I can act on their behalf if they're unable to make decisions for themselves.